Hi there. In this video I'll be answering a question about electric field patterns and Coulomb's law, which allows us to calculate the forces between charges. Here's a question from the revised advanced higher specimen paper. Part A says, figure 10A shows two opposite charges Q1 and Q2 separated by a distance of 210 millimetres. Draw a diagram to show the electric field pattern between these two charges. So I'll draw an electric field pattern over figure 10A, which is why I'm giving myself more space. When answering this question, lots of people draw something like this. This would be the electric field pattern for a dipole, a pair of opposite charges of equal magnitude. But in this question, we have Q1 on the left with a charge of plus 1.2 nanocoulombs and Q2 with a charge of negative 2.4 nanocoulombs. I've not even drawn arrows to represent the direction of the field lines because this diagram isn't quite right. The actual electric field pattern looks more like this. Now that we've got the shape, we can draw in the arrows. Remember that electric field lines point in the direction of the electric field vector at every point. The lines start at positive charges, or at infinity, and end at negative charges, or at infinity. Remember also that electric field lines are more dense where electric field strength is greatest. The method I use for remembering this electric field pattern, where we have opposite charges of different magnitude, is that some of the electric field lines form the shape of a heart. When I superimpose this on our electric field pattern, you'll see what I mean. Note that the point at the bottom of the heart shape points towards the charge of greater magnitude. This is just one way which you might use to help you remember. You can see that there are more electric field lines ending at charge Q2 than there are starting on charge Q1. This is because Q2 has the greater magnitude. Knowing this will also help you to draw the electric field pattern. You'll also need to be able to draw the electric field patterns for single charges, two charges of the same sign, and a uniform electric field. Now we'll take a look at part B of the question. Here it is. The question says, a third particle Q3 of charge negative 1.2 nanocoulombs is placed a distance of 50 millimetres to the right of Q2, as shown in figure 10b. We're then asked to calculate the magnitude and direction of the resultant force acting on Q3. So we'll be using this equation twice. Firstly, to find the force experienced by Q3 due to Q1, then the force experienced by Q3 due to Q2. We'll then add the two forces by vector addition. In the equation, Q1 and Q2 are the two charges involved. Epsilon naught is a constant called the permittivity of free space found in the data sheet at the start of the exam paper, and R is the distance between the charges. Now we'll call the force experienced by Q3 due to Q1 F13. It's a force of attraction to the left, since the charges have the opposite sign. We'll then call the force experienced by Q3 due to Q2 F23 which is a force of repulsion to the right, since both Q2 and Q3 are negative. To find force F13, we'll substitute our values into the equation. We have our two charges, plus 1.2 nanocoulombs and negative 1.2 nanocoulombs, separated by a distance of 260 millimetres, as seen in the diagram. This gives an answer of negative 1.92 times 10 to the negative 7 newtons to the left. For force F23, we do the same thing except the charges are negative 2.4 nanocoulombs and negative 1.2 nanocoulombs, separated by a distance of 50 millimetres, giving us 1.04 times 10 to the negative 5 newtons to the right. Now, it is possible to use Coulomb's law and only substitute the magnitude of the charges and not the sign, although I always encourage pupils to use the method I've used here as it's very important later in the course to include the sign of the charge when we're calculating electrostatic potential. Let's look at a diagram to remind ourselves how to add these two forces. We have a force of magnitude 1.92 times 10 to the negative 7 newtons acting to the left, and a force of magnitude 1.04 times 10 to the negative 5 newtons to the right. To add these forces, we need to decide which direction to take as positive. So I'll take forces acting to the right as positive. This is what we call sign convention. The resultant force acting on Q3 then is 1.04 times 10 to the negative 5 plus negative 1.92 times 10 to the negative 7, which equals 1.02 times 10 to the negative 5 newtons. Since this value is positive, it must be acting to the right. Here's the final part of the question. 
Part C says, charges Q1 and Q2 are fixed and particle Q3 is free to move. Describe the motion of Q3. What happens is this. Q3 experiences an unbalanced force to the right, so of course it accelerates to the right. As it does this, the distance between Q3 and the other charges increases, so the unbalanced force acting on Q3 will decrease, causing the acceleration to decrease. So Q3 has a decreasing acceleration to the right. And that, I'm afraid, is the enter question. For more information on upcoming videos, summary sheets and so on, visit physics-podcast.co.uk. Thank you for listening.